Hey everyone, welcome to week 21 of uh, Tuesday Tips. So, as I mentioned uh, a few times in these video series, uh, this is this is now we're on to the expert, or adva oh, sorry, these are the advanced uh, Tuesday Tips. So these are going to be until, well these are pretty much tips will take you to sub 1, sub 150, and sub 240. Uh, pretty much kind of the cutoffs that make you more of a world class solver. Um, these tips are pretty useful for, should be useful for anyone that's kind of not competing to like podium at a world championships or like these using all these tips properly will definitely give you the skills necessary to final at worlds or in to podium at your national or international or uh continental re competitions um kind of if you're trying to break into like the top two or three cubers in the whole world there's going to be a lot more a lot more stuff you need to know is like the stuff you need to know just to drop a tiny bit of time at the very highest level is pretty amazing um but yeah these are still going to be kind of more things that are very useful but not like hyper 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 specific um, after these kind of 10 videos I'll be making another set of super expert videos which will be kind of more just for the people that are really trying to be like one of the best solvers in the whole world those will kind of be more along on the rambly side of things and will just kind of be made for like only probably a few dozen people in each of the categories but are definitely something that's going to be interesting to watch um, so yeah so for the first week of Tuesday tips and the advanced methods, uh, this is a six by six tip. It's um, it's for OLO parity and orienting the last layer. So I'm just gonna do it on my four i four because um, it turns better, obviously. Uh, but it's pretty much for six by six and four by four. So um, obviously OLO parity, everyone knows it. Um, but there's a lot of different cases that uh, you should be aware of that can kind of help you out. So Essentially, what if your OLO parity doesn't do this, then I'm sorry, it's, this is only applicable for the OLO parity algorithm that flips this front edge and swaps these two while putting them in this orientation. So, if your, OLO, if your parity algorithm does this, then this is applicable. If not, learn the one that does. Um, I could, I'll do it slowly here. Yeah, so. Anyways, there are pretty much, because this algorithm flips one edge and orients two others, that means that for essentially any case where, every single case that where one edge is flipped and two corners are incorrect, you can solve with a commutator, parity, commutator. This is true for literally every single one, in every single case. Um, so like this one is this. Um, so there's a lot of, not all of them are very useful. In fact, I don't use most of them myself, but there's a couple ones that I definitely want to show you that are very useful and you should be uh, kind of thinking about. Um, so for instance, I wouldn't do this one in a solve. What uh, I kind of focus on for these is, are they reliable to do quickly every time and how useful are they? So by far the most useful one that a lot of people were surprised at that I, when I showed them, including I think Mats and Sian Nam, is pure parity. If you have pure parity, you can do R prime. Then you do the alg. R. Solves it completely. Uh, on 4i4, you could make the argument that when you're doing pure parity, you should really be looking to see if you have double parity or not and cancel it. But on 6x6, six six, you're definitely just going to do R prime parity and then fix it every time. The other case, there's actually only two cases where I actually specifically use the commutator. Um, the other case is, I think it's this. Yeah, it's this case. Um, in this specific case right here, it's and then commutator or parity undo. Uh, very fast because it's R use only and very easy to um, very easy to execute. There's also the mirror of this case, which is this case, and you may think also you should do it like this, with just L's, but if you have this, you can do soon, and then you can do pure parity. You'll soon into soon into pure parity will be faster. Um, similarly for the case I just showed you, you can do anti soon, but depending on the angle, it's a little tricky. It's a little more annoying because you have to bring it back to the front and stuff. That's kind of personal preference. Um, Definitely at this stage, you should, if you're kind of in the advanced group, you should understand how kind of commutators work, and I encourage you to kind of look around and kind of see 
how um, oops, how nice some of these algorithms are and which ones suit you. Like this one in particular is back to left two, and like that's okay. And doing parity on this will give you a give you one, this algorithm, which isn't that fast. But I definitely would recommend like that is personal preference on whether or not you want to do the commutator or not. But a lot of the OLL cases. You can either do parity into soon, which I always would do because soon is essentially no time, or you can do soon into parity, which is usually going to be faster. This is usually only helpful for canceling out bad OLLs. Uh, so yeah.